Milan, one of the best value that I ever got was information from my opponents when they would tell me what they thought was a weakness in my game. That's some of the most valuable info that I ever got because you don't know how it is to play against yourself. I'll give you one example. There was one guy when I was in college who told me that my second serve was kind of weak, which I didn't perceive it as such, but he was right. And then I proceeded to work on my second serve and improve it. So I'm gonna try something in today's video that I'm gonna call reverse coaching. I'm gonna play you on autopilot. I'm not gonna think about myself at all, but I'm gonna try to study your game and analyze the strengths and the weaknesses. I'm gonna talk into the mic while we play. And then when we're done, I'm gonna go home, I'm gonna edit this, I'm gonna send it to you, and I want you to listen to it. And I think that you can get a lot of value from this. So this is the first time I ever tried this type of coaching and it's gonna be challenging because when you play full out, you know, your thoughts are naturally gonna be on yourself, what you did wrong, and the ups and downs that you go through in the course of a match. So I'm gonna to try to tune all that out, put my game on autopilot and just concentrate on Milan's game. It's gonna be tough. I hope that my performance doesn't decrease because of this, because I don't recommend that you do this as a tactic to concentrate on your opponent's game. I think, especially at the recreational level, you gotta concentrate on your own game. So let's just hope that I don't play like garbage today. I'm gonna to try my best and hope that autopilot's gonna be good enough to give him a challenge because I do want him to play against a tough opponent that can possibly expose some of his weaknesses. That's what Milan is really good at, putting the ball back in play, making the other guy hit another shot. That was a good deep backhand there. He hit that really well off a slice, which is good to see because hitting aggressive off a low slice is not so easy. That's why he's got to be careful leaving balls half court because that gives me the opportunity to be aggressive. So when he starts being defensive, he needs to maintain his height and depth on the ball. See right there, that's a bad miss. He didn't get underneath the ball enough on that slice. He didn't finish the shot high enough either and therefore missing to the net. So that was the first real unforced error from Milan. Also stands fairly close to the baseline, which is someone that's not smart if the opponent's serving well. He needs to give himself a little bit more time back there. See, when he gets the first serve return, Back in play, it's often an attempt at a chip or a bunt. But because he's so close to the baseline, he often catches the ball late and pops it up. So I think if he goes further back, not only could he keep his bunts and chips lower, but he could maybe even take a cut on a first serve return. So again, he's standing very close. Good serve, good placement, good location. Great depth there. Hit that forehand really well. A lot of spin and very deep into the court. Keeping the 
locked in behind the baseline. It's also something that he needs to do. He can't depend on his defense. He needs to play aggressive in order to prevent my offense. The best prevention of the other guy's offense is offense. So the problem is when he plays defense and leaves the ball short, that's where he's in a lot of trouble. That's where he's gonna get blasted off the court with good players. He needs to find the height, find the depth in defensive situations. So it's the second time he's missed a back end off a low slice, which is definitely a sign. When you see patterns and mistakes, that's a sign of a weakness that needs to be worked on. That's a fantastic serve, Milan. He's got a great serve, and I really like what he did there. A high percentage serve into a good location down break point. That was phenomenal. That was a very good play. He needs to do more of that. He's got a good serve. He needs to find his locations. He's more of a spot server. Finding the location will help him get on top of the rally. Good cross-court shot. Anytime you have a guy hitting the ball outside the singles court, that's a good sign. Why is that a good sign? Because the percentages drop significantly when the other player is off the court they go for the shot, chances of missing are a lot higher. Fantastic backhand, Mila. So I really love that combo there, the kicker to the backhand, a high bouncer, and I gave him a weaker return, and he had the entire court to play one of his favorite shots, which is the backhand down the line. That was an excellent save on break point and an excellent hold. That's Milan's biggest strength by far, is his athleticism and court speed. He ran that down really well and also maintained his touch running down a tough little half-court dropper like that. Now what my college coach Mel Purcell used to tell me is when I used to do shots like that, crazy highlight reel type shots, is that those are impossible to maintain over the long course of a match. So while it's really good what he did there, he still doesn't want to be in defensive situations like that long term because it's not going to work. He's not going to be able to win matches playing these crazy defensive shots that are so tough to pull off consistently. Great backhand, Milan. Good depth. That's the key for Milan. Depth and aggressiveness from the baseline so he's not reliant on his defensive skill. That was a good deep backhand. Forced the error from the opponent. Now, if you watch episode one of Milan's Road to Men's Open Tournaments, one of his biggest weaknesses is no pace sitter type balls. His footwork tends to freeze, he's not positioned well, his intensity goes down, and he does make a lot of mistakes off of balls that have very little pace. That's a shot selection error right there. You don't want to go for a shot that close to the line from a defensive situation far behind the baseline. That was poor shot selection. Ah, well, too easy mistakes. That's my fault. Now you can hear Milan muttering, too easy mistakes. That's sometimes the difference. You make a couple of easy misses here and there. Those type of things can determine the outcome of a set when the level is even. Almost too spinny on that one. He needs to go for a little more pace. That was too soft of a first serve. See, there's nothing more frustrating than trying to get the first serve in and missing it and then having to do a second serve. So that's something that Milan needs to work on is improve his first serve percentages, but also at the same time hit the first serve faster. Long. That's the problem of not making first serve, especially down 
in the score you're forced to improve the placement and the speed of your second serve and that's how you start making double faults so first serve percentage is a problem great serve Milan see that type of serve I want to see more often that was fast flat and placed really well he needs to serve like that more frequently I noticed the trend right this is the second time he missed a sitter ball half court this is 100 percent a pattern of mistakes which is a weakness in his game which definitely needs to be worked on and improved Okay, my so now that he's down three to a break I'm gonna get an insight into his psyche how he plays when it's down because anybody can play well when they're up when everything's okay but how does a player react to being down a break in a set is super important information <laughs> Again, a lot of his mistakes are coming off of easy balls. When he's in full control, he's in the middle of the court. I do see a lack of intensity, a lack of footwork on those type of balls. He does not want to live and die off his defense. Even though he won that point, looking long term, it's going to be a tough way to win matches against high quality players. He needs to find a way to be aggressive without missing. Another super important game from a mental aspect, down four to serving. If he gets a stronghold here, it's gonna be a good sign of him trying to get back into the set if he plays a plays a lexidaisical game here that set is sure gonna go away real quick no. Did a little better job there but he needs to lift that backhand even higher he almost missed that one into the net just like a couple of the other backhands off of slice mistakes that's what a weak first serve percentage gets you guys taking rips off your second serve yeah, yeah he's he's saying exactly what i said before now he's got to go again over a second serve. It's going to be tricky. He's going to be forced to go a little bit stronger. And again, footwork mistake. Just goes to show you guys the difference between footwork and speed in tennis. Those are two completely different things. While Milan is super fast, he has excellent speed. His footwork is costing him tons of points today. Okay, that was actually a positive miss. He actually tried to hit that. I just don't like the location. I would have preferred cross score to rip there with a little bit more spin, but I like him taking cuts from defensive situations. He needs to, or he's gonna get blown, he's gonna get blown off the court. Okay, so now there's not really a window, but it's 15 all. Let's see how he plays this point because if he gets this point, he maybe has a look at getting one of his breaks back so this is going to be super interesting how he plays this point at 2 5 15 all and in creation he said udari backhand which means hit your backhand that's exactly what he needs to do turn defense into offense Way too much defense and bad footwork again. Didn't adjust to that ball. <coughs> he did a better job keeping his return deep, which goes to show you that when you keep your shots deep, you can force more errors. Same mistake. This is the fifth time he missed the forehand in that manner. Short, 
weak and half court. That's why he makes a ton of forehand mistakes. That was a much, much better forehand there. Good aggressive shot. He got me to let go of my offhand and hit a one-handed defensive shot. First serve, good placement on that one. Good speed too. Ace! Okay, footwork again. It's too stationary on those shots. And the funny thing about Milan is that he actually has a fast serve. He just cho chooses not to hit it because of his first serve percentage. But the key fact is that when you try to get your serve in, you miss just as much, which goes to show you here, he hit it faster and made a lot more first serve. So there's a lesson to all you guys. When you try to slow down your serve, you're changing technical elements of your serve, which will lead to more mistakes. When it comes to your first serve, hit it at your normal speed. And why am I saying that? Because that's what your muscle memory is. Your body is calibrated to hit the serve at a certain speed. When you start slowing it down, there are changes in your technique, which will lead to more errors. It's a really tough shot there because he was too far away from the ball. That was a tough shot to handle. Again, it's tough to live and die off the defense. He had a look on that forehand return. He should have hit it a little bit more aggressive. You play against a big server, you gotta take advantage when the big server is missing first serves because it's not gonna last. Eventually, serves from a big server are gonna start landing in and then it's gonna be super tough to break. See, I hate seeing that. That's a desperation drop shot. Why am I saying that? Not because the quality of the drop shot wasn't even that bad, but the context of it. He was behind the baseline and it was very early in a rally and I was not in a defensive situation. So for that reason, a very bad shot selection there. Ah, it's still going well. Living and dying off that second serve gonna to be a tough way to win matches against good players. Now here's the thing. If he tries to go for more on that second, he's gonna start double faulting. So the second serve is not the problem. The first serve percentage is the problem. And again, he's not, he, go, he went back to not going for his first serve for some reason. Why? So that was definitely a better serve. He hit a slice, which should give him a clue because he's playing an old stiff guy who doesn't like to bend. So slice serves are gonna be super effective. That's just bad luck right there. He hit a good serve and the other guy just got a little bit lucky on the return. Oh. Hey, he got lucky, he won that point. Again, living and dying off his defense, leaving ball short. It's gonna to be tough to survive like that. I didn't keep track in my head, but that was probably the fifth back and he missed off a slice. So a lot of clues from this set, a lot of weak spots, a lot of patterns of mistakes. It's a great way to hear the thoughts of your opponent during a match on things that you can improve or things that you do well. High intensity, don't steer it. Come around the ball. Good, come around it. Your body weight moving right to left. Here we go. Don't steer it, Milan. Come on, come around the ball. Here we go. Go again. Come on, body weight transfers right to left. Much better. Come again. Go again. Don't fall forward like that. Come on. Again. Go again. Come on. Connect the racket to your core. Don't fall back on it. Come. Don't take it too early. Let it come up a little bit. There you go. Come. And attack this one. Crush it. Okay, good. Very good. Milan, I'm going to give you dead sitters half court. I'm going to mix up some like dead feeds and some slices, okay? 
Forehand and backhand. Do both. And just come back a little bit when you're done. Good. Good. Come again. Good. Back up a little bit. Back up. Okay, back up a little bit. Good. Don't try to take it too early. Take your time. Milan, the earlier you take it, the more chances you give yourself to miss, okay? This is a non-threatening ball. You take your time. Good. Again. Come on. Good. Here we go. A slice. Come. And a slice. Come. Here we go. Get down on that backhand. Down. Again. Low, low, low. Good. Come. Now go cross court with your backhand. Cross court. Now get down low. Good. Good, Milan. Now sitters. Crush these. Take your time. Don't rush. Take the ball a little bit higher. Involve your body, okay? Connect the ball to your core. Good. Good. Here's a low slice. Get down. More spin. Come on, lift up the ball. Better. Again, lift it up. Come on, lift the ball up. And crush this one. Don't take it too early. Let it come up. Good. Again, let it come up. And crush this one. Come. Better. See, the thing is, if you are too early on this type of ball, yeah. you increase your chances of mistiming the ball. Yeah. There's absolutely no need to take this ball early because it's a non-threatening ball. It's a dead ball. Yep. It's a sitter ball. So in other words, that ball is not going to penetrate through the court and push you back. You can take your time. Now, if I hit with heavy topspin yep. and you wait for the ball to come down, now you might get pushed too far back and be defensive. But here, on a non-threatening sitter type ball, there's absolutely no reason to take those super early off the ground because you increase your chances of mistiming the ball. Let the ball come up, take it a little bit higher. That's where you're stronger and crush it for a winner. Definitely. And you're much more consistent when you wait a little bit. Of course. Milan, too many times you settle for defensive one-handed backhands. So I want you to turn defense to offense and hit so your backhand open from... Stand, open stance back. It can be open stance, it can be close stance, yeah. depending on the situation. But the objective is for you to turn defense to offense and hit the backhand hard with two hands. Of course, the margins have to be good. Go with spin high over the net, but hit the ball hard, okay? Here we go. Come around the cone, around the cone. And again, come on. Try. You got to try your best to turn defense into offense. Come on. These are tough shots. I'm putting you in a defensive situation. Come on. Okay, come again. Defense into offense. Come, Milan. Better. Come on. You're a phenomenal athlete. You can pull off these shots. Good. Come. Better, Milan. Come again. Five more. Better. A little bit more power. Come on, hit the ball cleanly. Better. And last one right here. And go one more, Mila. More one more. And go. Come. Okay, good. All right, very nice. Good. Go around the cone. Come on. Around the cone and go. Good, Milan. Come again. Come on. Go cross court. You got more margins when you go cross court. Come on. Good. Turn defense into offense, my friend. Come. Okay, you had to do that. There was no other choice. Match point. Generally, you do well forehand. Yeah, it's better. Defensive forehands, turning them into offensive shots from very desperate situations. You do a good job with your forehand. But when we played the match, I did see on the back end that you settled for this a little bit too early. So it's in the intention. It's you trying to hit the ball from defensive situations. And when there's no way to hit it, then this emergency shot will come out on its own intuitively. Yep. If it's planned ahead of time, now you're letting go of an opportunity to actually hit the ball. Yep. So the key is letting the emergency shot come out on its own and intending to turn defense to offense all the time. When you turn defense to offense, of course, don't go for the crazy low percentage winner. You want to hit the ball hard, but with the good margins and a good location on the other side. Milan, flat or slice, but Get closer to your max speed, okay? Don't decelerate. I find on the first serve, you often decelerate. 
That was better. You lose speed, yeah. but interestingly, you also start missing a lot more. Right. So maintain your speed, lower the body, and you got the target. Beautiful shot. Yep. Now listen, if you serve like that, you're gonna get so many free points. Yeah. You don't have to go through these long rallies, okay? It is very valuable to get free points every now and then. Of course. And you got a consistent second serve. You got a lot of kick on there. It doesn't miss that much. Yeah. You're not uh, a guy that double faults a lot, so there's really no reason for you not to go for the first yep. serve, okay? I agree. Go ahead and go wide. That's a beautiful slice serve, Mila, nice. See, placement is super important when you go slice out yep. wide because if you don't get it close to the line, it's right in the wheelhouse of a good forehand return. Yes, sir. So this is a dangerous, dangerous spot. You better hit the targets when you go for it out wide. Yeah, I find that even if I serve slower, my head's a good angle. Yeah. It's more successful than just hitting it hard on the forehand True, side. True, but don't serve slower. Yeah. Not anymore, okay? No more slow first serves. Unless you're doing a kick on the first serve, that's right. different. But even on the kick, you don't want to serve slow on the kick, you go full speed on the kick. Right. Remember, anytime you're slowing down your serve, whether it be your first serve or your second serve, you're changing fundamental elements of your technique and your intention is to get more serves in, but the exact opposite right. is the case. You start missing even more. Yeah, it's sort of like forehand, I mean, you want to slow down the follow through. Absolutely, just... same thing, right? Yeah, you don't thing. trust your forehand, you start pushing yeah. on it and start steering it. Right. You lose control, you start missing. Oh, that's on the line, right, Mila? Yeah, I think so. That's an ace, my friend. That's what I'm saying, Milan. You got a big serve and you got to use it. Nice work, man. You're doing good. Thank you, coach.